keluarga ataupun rakyat Malaysia yang terkandas di Sudan. Oh, Malaysia all, all out. The 30 that that's with us is the entire Malaysian. Uh, the attack in the city has been intense. They were, uh, there was artillery, mortar fire, there is uh, uh, even airstrikes that hit around the, my residence and in, including the Petronas uh, complex. That's the reason why we took uh, quick action to get them all out quickly. We were supposed to arrive in uh, Port Sudan at 3 a.m. on the 24th, but we couldn't make it and arrive 12 hours later because in Sudan you are not supposed to travel on roads after midnight to 4 a.m. So we had to make a call to stay and uh, we, because initially the plan was not to stop at all because there are so many dangers. Eh? When you stop at any uh, public location, you might be hijacked by other um, people who are trying to escape. So we don't have uh, close personnel, what you call as security arms, uh, security, armed security with us. So it is something that we, we from the beginning said we would not do. But unfortunately, because of the um, circumstances, we had to stay overnight in Kasala uh, for about until Subo. So to answer about the question on how the trip uh, began in Khartoum, right up to Port Sudan, it was fraught with a lot of. Uh, uh, we need to do a lot of risk uh, assessment and choose the route to get out of Khartoum because there were many uh, options. So for us, we chose the most uh, risk-averse uh, situation uh, that would not uh, put our uh, convoy under any uh, risk of attack because it's important to find a route that is not being contested between the SAF and the RSF. So we decided to take a very long route uh, to Port Sudan rather than the shorter one because the shorter one, uh, although it's only about 850 kilometers roughly, um, the, 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 there are three areas where they, the, uh, it's contested. Well, the main road that we took uh, going down south through uh, uh, Madani and uh, Kasala that area is the only problem was the road condition. So we had to ensure that the drivers that we um, uh, hired were from the region, and that was very difficult to find because they they know they need to know the uh, terrain as well as the uh, security um, officers that were on duty. To give you a, a, a illustration of the difficulties to travel through this uh, 1,300 kilometer. Uh, approximately about every 50 to 80 kilometers there's a checkpoint and every time we reach a checkpoint we do not know who's in control but alhamdulillah that throughout this journey it was controlled by the government forces and our drivers who accompanied us or who drove us they had uh, relations with this uh, uh, security uh, personnel and that smoothened the journey I think we were with the South Koreans and the J Japanese so they were in front of us and when they allowed it, they all said that we are part of that convoy, so all of us were waved through. But there was a huge uh, traffic jam there that uh, for, the, for the locals, it would take about two or three hours to get into the city. The city is packed. It's full of UN personnel and other um, evacuees. So we had to uh, make sure that we, uh, you know, we had to find accommodation and, and supplies because we were running out already. We couldn't carry much because we only had one uh, one or two bags with each of us and the embassy had provided food enough for two days um, and we had to restock again in Port Sudan because we need to find out which uh, way out and Alhamdulillah the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia um, came to assist. <laughs> Thank you.